OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping Orange County. With your host, Don Camber. Hello, live from the OC Talk Radio studios at UCI's Beale Applied Innovation Center. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber with another great guest impacting our community in a positive way. Today, I welcome Bowers Museum Vice President of External Affairs, Kelly Bishop. The museum is the largest museum in Orange County. Thank you, Kelly, for being on Impact OC. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Please explain how the museum continues to achieve its mission, which is to enrich lives through the world's finest arts and cultures. So the museum was originally built in 1936, and we've since then been striving to grow and better serve our community. And in the past few years, that's been a changing goal um, as things evolve with COVID and the pandemic. But I'm very happy to say today we're at kind of a new high with that. Um, so if there's a silver lining to the pandemic, it's that it pushed us to create more virtual and online programs and our accessibility is now kind of better than ever. So we are fully on site again. We're offering on site programs, including free family festivals every month, school tours for kids, um, parent support system for our local Santa Ana community. But we're also um, doing all of our full robust distinguished lecturer series, um, film screenings and exhibitions. And most, if not all, uh, is offered hybrid, which means if the lecture is done on site one day, we film that and then we offer it online the week after. So we're really with that reaching a global community in a way that wasn't possible before. Um, and our whole goal or whole tagline we say is bringing the world to you. So in whatever way we can make that possible, we're always striving to grow that way. So where are you located and how big are, is the facility? Yeah, so we're located in the heart, um, historic heart of Orange County, which is in Santa Ana, just off the 5 Freeway. Um, we're about a mile, I think, from Disneyland for <laughs> those who are coming from out of town. Um, and we're 100,000 square feet. So we're the oldest and largest museum in Orange County. So when people take a tour of the museum, what are they going to see? Like a lot of art? Are they going to see sculptures? Yeah, so it's a, a variety. Um, our permanent collection, um, we have a lot of it on permanent view. Uh, we have more in storage also. But we have uh, nine ongoing permanent exhibitions that are from around the globe. So everything from ancient arts of China to spirits and headhunters of the Pacific um, to ceramics of Mexico. And then we have a whole historic wing dedicated to California history as well. Um, those are always ongoing on view. And then we rotate out uh, special featured exhibitions, which are made in collaboration with world-class institutions from around the globe. Um, so right now we have two very special exhibitions. Do tell. Yeah, so, well, I'm sporting one of them on my t-shirt right now. <laughs> this is the um, All That Glitters, the Crown Jewels of the Walt Disney Archives, um, which is done in collaboration with the Walt Disney Company and the Walt Disney Archives, which is a branch of that company. Um, and they are located in Burbank. So not only is this an exhibition about Disney, but it also is a reflection on Orange County history, right? Um, Disney is like this shared um, memory that a lot of us who are native to Orange County um, hold dear. Um, and the exhibition itself showcases accessories, jewelry, um, and props, as well as a few costumes um, from live action films and TV shows um, put out by Disney, as well as uh, Fox uh, 20th Century Films, which Disney acquired. So there's over 200 films represented. So you get everything from the um, Heart of the Ocean from Titanic to Aladdin's costume worn by Will Smith to um, the Princess Diary gowns and jewelry uh, worn by Anne Hathaway. And it's really fun because it, there's something for everyone in that show. Um, we all have our favorites from childhood and from current day. So we even have things in there um, like Loki, the TV show that just is recently popular with kids. And um, we also have um, the Black Panther necklace. So there's even current day um, references there. But there's, it's just really fun to see how people connect with the exhibition and find their own memories in the show. And also notice the craftsmanship and the artistry in jewelry making, in costume design. And we have different panel discussions and lectures and 
film screenings that connect with the exhibition while it's on view. I understand children learn a lot through that exhibition. Absolutely. Yeah, so we have school tours that come through the museum all the time. Um, they do a tour with our volunteer docents through the exhibition, and then they get to do an art project on site as well. And that's true of all of our exhibitions. Those are all offered now both on site and again virtually. So if um, students aren't able to come on site, they can experience a virtual tour and then we send them off with an art kit that they can do at the schools. And what kind of art are they doing? It's a whole variety. So really it's just about connecting with the pieces on view in ways that maybe the kids haven't been challenged with before. Um, and a lot of kids, you know, maybe don't do so well academically, but with the arts, they find a way of expressing themselves. They find a confidence in their work um, and a way of communi communicating that they don't otherwise have in the classroom. Um, but it's about creating those entry points and those um, inter interdisciplinary connections for the kids so that they start to process, okay, I understand now, you know, the importance of this because I experienced, you know, and saw it for myself in the galleries. So instead of having a field trip, they literally can do some things online. Correct. Yeah. and really connect with it that way and so I take it you get tours from around the country yeah we do and we've gotten you know in Denmark they've downloaded our educators guides I mean it's really fun because obviously we can track those things so it's it's a really neat you know progression for the museum that one that was probably overdue but uh, the pandemic pushed us towards that so but do you have a lot of school districts who actually do tours at the school absolutely or at, the at museum. the museum yeah right. yeah definitely and we're, we're doing them you know three and four times a week usually so and and uh, it's only going to pick up more, I'm sure, as we get further away from the peak of the pandemic. So, so when they're going to go on a tour, though, they probably do some pre-work. Yeah, I mean, we do have resources that they can um, access ahead of their visit to prep and kind of know what to expect. And it's kind of up to the teacher how deep a dive they want to take before they visit. But, I mean, the important thing there is just creating accessibility, right? So these kids, um, some of them some of the schools can't afford to come on their own. So we'd get grants and underwriting for Title I schools um, and we cover their cost of their visit of the art projects and of the buses. Um, and then, you know, those who can fund their own visit, they do that. But we just wanna make everything as easy and accessible as possible. What are the grades of people who go on tours? Um, K through 12 and then for, for school tours. And then we also offer self-guided um, college tours and adult group tours are led by our volunteer docents. So, so on a typical day, ages. would you likely see more children at the museum than you would just the general public? It just depends on what day you visit. So typically our weekdays are um, mostly attended by school groups and then senior groups that are visiting. Um, and then the weekends are usually more of the families and you know younger adults um, and teens. So. so explain how a family should plan to go to the museum. Yeah, so for anyone who wants to come, um, our museum website is bowers.org. And you can go there, you can buy tickets online. Um, right now we have $15 tickets for adults for general admission. And then if you wanted to see the Disney um, exhibition, it's a special ticket. So it's a $10 addition to the 15. Um, and then you can also look at our events calendar online and decide if there's some kind of film screening or a lecture you'd like to attend. All of those will, you know, in some way connect to the exhibitions on view and give you a deeper understanding of what you're experiencing in person. And I should note also we have a second featured exhibition I should mention, um, Everest Descent to Glory. It's um, a really amazing show. It's put on in partnership with the Royal Geographical Society of London, and it's primarily a photography show, but there are original objects as well. It tells the story of five of the original attempts to ascend Mount Everest. So that started in 1921, and they didn't successfully get to the top until 1953. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of interesting backstory to why it took so long and the different technologies that came out during that time. Um, the original shoes they were trying to climb with, they were just hammering in nails into the bottom of their shoes to, to create crampons before crampons were a thing. Um, and then we have original oxygen tanks, which, you know, weighed way too much and were not really functionally viable for this kind of expedition. But um, somehow they made it up higher and higher each time and, um, you know, unfortunately lives were lost and there's the story of that and then finally in the end in 1953 you have the the final wonderful story of 
um, a former Sherpa and a beekeeper from New Zealand who get to the top together in a pair. And um, my favorite story is that they refused to say who got there first because they did it in partnership and they wanted to be recognized as partners in that way. So it's really, um, you know, it's a sad story in a lot of it, but it's also a really inspiring story. Um, about like man, women and men's uh, resilience and their ability to, you know, aspire to great things. What are the logistics of going to the museum in terms of are you allowed to bring food? Do they sell food? Yeah. What days of the week is it open? Yeah, so we're only closed Mondays. The rest of the week we're open. Um, we're open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We do have a restaurant that is open 11 to 2 p.m. Um, and then it's really good food, so I highly recommend it. We also have a gallery store, and they sell um, kind of local artisan things as well as international um, artisan and exhibition related, um, you know, t-shirts and <laughs> gear. And um, they did some really fun, like, uh, souvenir kind of things for Everest. And there's actually um, prints that you can buy that are of the uh, photography in that exhibition. So that's really great. Um, and then parking is $6. And um, if you dine at Tangata, you get that refunded also. So yeah, and it's um, free to Santa Ana residents on Sundays. So are you allowed to bring food and eat on the ground? You can if you do that on the grass, like outside, um, but obviously not like in the restaurant. But. Now you have an after hours program. Um, yeah, we, we have a few different things. So um, we are offering a special after hours tour of the Walt Disney Archives that's going to be led with the ar archive staff um, twice during the run of the exhibition. That uh, show closes June 19th, so people should hurry in to check it out. Um, but there are two tours planned over the next couple months. Um, and they can see the dates and sign up for that at Bowers.org. So when it's after hours, what does that mean? It just means the museum's been closed. Um, we close at four. And so it's kind of a really exclusive, more personable experience when you don't have so many people around you. Um, and we're capping the tour, I, I believe, at 25. So it'll be you and the archive staff. And you can really, like, have conversations with them and get to know them and um, get up close in a way that you wouldn't normally get to during open hours. Now, it is the oldest museum in Orange County. Can you kind of share with us what it was in the very early years to yeah. where it is now? Sure. So originally, the museum was founded by Charles and Ada Bowers, who were citrus growers and landowners. Um, they, when they passed away, left a bequest to the city of Santa Ana. Um, they left the land and then uh, $100,000 to start the museum. And originally, the museum... Um, I believe it was completed in 32 it was, but it didn't open until 36 because of the depression and um, economic uh, issues there. And so in 36, when it finally opened, it was primarily uh, California local history. So these were objects that were um, donated by folks in the community, um, as well as things that the, that the Bowers had, um, had uh, got on their own. And over time, that you know, core remains and grew. And as we expanded a little bit, major expansion in the 80s and the 70s and in the 90s, the museum was added to and that mission expanded. And we really got um, some amazing um, support from local donors who um, saw that this could be like a cultural center and icon for Southern California, uh, for Orange County. And um, so it's really evolved into serving not only our local community and the state of California, but also the country, and we get a ton of international travelers as well. So, Do you have major fundraisers? Yeah, so once a year we'll do like a major gala. Um, it changes depending on, we try to hook it, um, plug it into an exhibition that's coming up. But our gala in the fall, I can't announce the exhibition yet, but it'll be a very big, exciting one. Um, for anyone interested in couture fashion, that will be a fun one to watch. Um, so we do that, but, you know, mainly it's like the support of our members, um, and our volunteers who make the museum what it is. Um, we have an amazing chairwoman who's a, you know, volunteer on our board. She's been there for 20 years, um, and she is her name, and she's just a powerhouse, and she just always is working for the museum and cares so deeply. Um, we have a president, 
um, who's been there 30 years, Peter C. Keller, and he's always working on stuff. So we just have these powerhouses at the top who are always trying to reach out, connect with people, get new exciting exhibitions, and really um, promote you know support for the museum so that we can do these fro- free programs um, for the community also, which what we do are, a lot of. What are some of the activities the volunteers do? So the volunteers, like I said, are um, some of them are docents, and they actually lead the tours for school groups, for adults. Um, we also have volunteers who help with our free monthly festivals. So those are free days once a month on Sundays, 11 to 3 o'clock. And each um, festival has a different theme, highlighting a different culture that we're celebrating and also connecting to whatever holiday might be around that time. So, for example, our last one was early April. It was a Japanese cherry blossom festival. Um, so the volunteers will help do art projects with the kids then and um, help to do face painting and then there's live performances. Um, volunteers even help in the office so I have a couple of interns who are amazing <laughs> who help and um, we also have um, volunteers who help in office with like you know stuffing membership envelopes. I mean we're a nonprofit so it really is all hands on deck and um, oddly enough, tonight is our volunteer appreciation dinner, <laughs> so good timing to talk about volunteers. So we try to show our appreciation at least once a year in a big way, but every day um, for these amazing volunteers that make our work possible. Do you have a percentage of the population that comes on a regular basis and therefore are members of the Bowers Museum? Um, I don't like have the percentage of the whole population, but I know our our attendance is um, mainly in Orange County. So in uh, Orange County, I believe, is about 75%. And then after that, it's L.A. primarily and then international after that. But people come on a regular basis. Correct, yeah. And so we have members. Membership is a huge way to support us. If you're not somebody that you know can come and volunteer and you're not going to do a huge um, annual donation or anything, you can be a member. You get free unlimited access to the museum uh, general admission, so those nine permanent galleries I talked about. Um, with your membership and then the special ticketed exhibitions like the Disney exhibition you just pay the uptick of ten dollars for that um, exhibition but you do get your first visit free and you get invited to exclusive events so like when we have a new exhibition like this we have a big member opening and you get to come for that for free you get to meet the curator often or um, you know some of the staff from Disney and those are always really fun nights because it kind of recenters our tight-knit community and what I love about the Bowers is we are like a mid-sized museum and I've worked at bigger museums and I've worked at smaller museums and this is just the right size because we're big enough to do these really cool shows we have the resources um, and the bandwidth but we're also small enough that people know us and they feel as they should that we are their museum and that sense of community is really important and it's not an intimidating space to go to it's a welcoming space Um, And we want to continue to make it as accessible as possible. So So if people go online, can they get access to some of the videos of the museum? Yeah. So if you go, um, we're on, well, social media, we're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and most recently on TikTok. My interns are helping a lot with the TikTok (laughs) because I'm already aging out of that. (laughs) Um, But they're also on our website. There's a number of videos stored there that show glimpses into our programs the festivals we've been doing a really neat thing since you know the whole pandemic hit where we offer virtual festivals so we're doing we we brought back the on-site festival but we have a filmographer cover all the different aspects of the festival while it's going and then we release it virtually on facebook and youtube a week later for free so you can kind of re-experience or experience for the first time if you weren't able to show up in person so in a sense covid brought the world to the museum yeah exactly yeah and it's it's you know, an evolving thing. And we're trying to stay, um, you know, responsive to the needs of our visitors and think outside the box as we have from day one since the pandemic hit. Like, how can we make this more accessible? What is a user-friendly way of doing this? And I think, you know, our community can expect to see more and more of that roll out in the next year. We have more plans on how to reach people um, you know, both on site and virtually in a more accessible way. So. Well, on site, you have workshops. Yes. So, on site, we have lectures, workshops. We have 
senior enrichment program called Anne's Treasures that we do twice a month, and it's an art workshop that is really near and dear to my heart and a number of the staff because we get such amazing feedback from the participants. Like, this is their community. They've built it over the years, um, and they so appreciate that that has stayed intact even through the pandemic. We were offering it in a drive-up car you know, drop the art kit in your car uh, style when we had to, but we're so happy to be welcoming them back now. Um, but we also have just a slew of other programs, film screenings, lectures, um, concerts, and they're all on our website at bowers.org. And then we send out an e-blast every Friday for anyone who wants to get um, more up-to-date information. That's usually where we announce our exhibitions first. Um, and so if you wanted to be added to that list, you can just go to any page on our website, go to the bottom, and it'll say sign up for newsletter, and you just put your name into there. So, so again, the website is? Bowers.org. Yeah, so www.bowers.org. Thank you, Bowers Museum Vice President of External Affairs, Kelly Bishop, for being on Impact OC. And I thank everyone for tuning in. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber. Have an impactful day. You've been listening to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping our community. Right here on Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio.